presentation. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Salah. Thank you. Uh, now Thank we'll you. start, inshallah. We'll start our presentation. First of all, I will, uh, with my name, my name is Muhammad Ibrahim. I am 26 uh, years of experience in the oil and gas field. I am a member of ICML. And the other, alhamdulillah, Salah, he already introduced the other certificates. So inshallah, we'll start uh, the presentation. This is my LinkedIn uh, profile. Okay. Before talking about the dry gas seal, we will start first and talking about uh, the history of the dragon seal. First of all, centrifugal compressors, shaft and seal, it is actually uh, consists of many shaft and seals. It started with labran seals, after that carbon segment seals, and the floating ring circumferential with seals and phase contact seal. And the last is the dry gas seal, which is our uh, presentation, our uh, focusing for today. Labran seal. We'll start a, a brief only about uh, Labran seal and the others. After that, we'll end up with dry gas seal. Labran seal, as you see here, it is actually a simple design and the low pressure. And generally can be made from softer material to prevent the damage for the rotor. Okay. Labran seal used for many places in centrifugal compressors. Actually, if we are talking about centrifugal compressors, we have turbo centrifugal compressors and high speed centrifugal compressors. The difference is depend on the uh, driver. If you have gas turbine or steam turbine as driver, we are named as turbo centrifugal machine or turbo centrifugal compressors. If you have another driver like electrical motor, we are uh, talking about high speed centrifugal compressor. This to avoid any confusion about the name, because this like like a terminology. Okay, uh, for the labran seal, we will find labran seal in many places in the uh, machine. You will find labran seal as you see here between the stages, and also it is used in the separation as a separation seal in the dry gas seal, and used as well in the balancing drum and in the bearing housing seal. All these places, we are using the labran seal. Even in the dry gas seal itself, we are using also labran seal in the separation seal part. This is another slide talking about advantage and disadvantage or pros and cons about the labran seal. Okay, so I will go through it quickly because as you know, there is no any time and they have only 30 minutes. But you can go through it, inshallah. Uh, so, sorry, Engineer Muhammad, uh, because this is the last presentation. Um, if you exceeded the 30 minutes, so uh, of, co of course, if you have something else or if you have any other commitments, so you can stick with the 30 minutes. But if you have more time for us and you want to no uh, exceed no a little okay. more, so nice. take your time. Thank you so much. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. Thank sorry. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. If we're talking about Labyrinth Seal, uh, we are talking about high reliability and long life, lower cost compared to the other uh, uh, seals. It is easy to install as well. Okay, if we are talking about this advantage, even it is uh, uh, reliable, it is lower cost, but it is still also high up leakage compared to the other seals. It is limited to low pressures. And in most cases also, it need NRT gas to be applied. The other one is carbon segment seal. It is like a carbon rings, okay, we are using. And this is the advantage, as you see here in the picture, it is carbon rings and instead of labyrinths. It is a second, or you can say second generation of the seals. Uh, the advantage is quite reliable. It is lower cost compared to the other and easy to install and maintain as well. Regarding this advantage, it is not suitable for high pressure. And in most cases, it needs NRT gas as well to be applied. And the leakage will be higher than the others like dry gas seal, which we are talking about later on. This is the floating ring circumferential with seals. It needs liquid barrier because 
here we have apply a liquid barrier like oil is almost lubricating oil applied here and make a barrier to prevent any leakage it is circumferential type of uh, of seals uh, and it is uh, found in many arrangements face contact seal as you see here is another type of uh, uh, contact wet seals as you see this is advantage and disadvantage of the wet seal it can be applied for low to medium pressures is lower leaks compared to the carbon segment seals and it is actually don't fail in a catastrophic manner because labyrinth seal if you have any uh, contact it will be dam to make damage to the uh, shaft and it can also mixing uh, of loop oil with oil seal is not a major concern because both are oil it uh, it is easily to be managed and uh, uh, don't need any addition to equipment to maintain ideal condition to the rail. About this advantage, it is not suitable for higher pressures and also life is dependent on the quality of the seal oil. If you have any contamination, any debris on the oil, for sure it will affect the contact area and it will damage the carbon uh, or the wet seal. Uh, it is expensive compared to the others like labyrinth seal, which we are talking earlier. Uh, if the seal contaminated, as we said, also, process gas will be contaminated as well. Now we'll get uh, the time to talk about the dry gas seal, which is our subject for today. I put this picture to give you an idea about the location of the mechanical seal only. Here, as you see, the cross section of the uh, centrifugal compressors. Okay, here we have drive end and the non drive end. This is a drive end, this is a non drive end. We have here the location of the dry gas seal. We have drive inside and we have non drive inside. This is the rotor. Okay. And we'll talk about the other parts later on in the presentation. Dry gas seal. Some guys said it is actually dry gas lubricated mechanical seals because the uh, film between the face and seat, it is actually, instead of uh, fluid, it is actually gas. So some, be some people named as dry gas lubricated mechanical seal. I put some names here as a manufacturer for the dry gas seal, like John Crane, Flosserve, Eagle Bergman. This is actually the famous one. And for sure, there is maybe one or two other companies available in the market. It is used in oil. It can uh, oil and gas can be used in chemical and also used in the gas industry like LNG. Here we are talking about uh, the history of the dry gas seal. The first dry gas seal installed in 1951 by Kaidon. This is uh, uh, the first one. After that, it came to John Crane. John Crane in 1968. It is actually a bit and the first dry gas seal. After that, the first one installed at site, it was 1975, exactly. After uh, the first one, it came with the uh, groove because the first one is single. You can say like here, it is uh, unidirectional. After that, they uh, make another one, which is bi-directional. The first, the, the difference between unidirectional and bi-directional, it is actually, if you have one dry gas seal, for example, it is should be drive or non-drive, according to the di direction of rotation. But suppose you have only one dry gas seal and one fail. In this case, you cannot interchangeable between both of them because it is unique and it is unidirectional. But if you have bi-directional, at the time you will be able to use in drive or non-drive end. Actually now the current uh, uh, default in all centrifugal machine, it is the dry gas seal. No, even if you have all the machine you are upgrading and the retrofit to the, to the dry gas seal, it is actually common uh, one in the world. And it is capable to handling any application, any gas, 
as we said earlier. The Draga steel actually replaced the oil wet seal due to three issues. The first one is the system simplicity. The gas seal is simpler compared to the oil uh, seal system. And no process gas contamination because you, in the dry gas seal, you have to make sure you have a very clean, dry gas applied to the area between the face and seat. And the efficiency is for sure it's much better and also long life. This is the uh, advantage and disadvantage of the dry gas seal. As we see here, it can be applied for almost entire pressure range. Okay, high pressure, medium pressure, low pressure, regardless. It is lower leaked compared to the other seal types. And the compressor gas is used in most cases as a sealing media instead of uh, the other system like the oil. It is the life of dry gas seal is generally better compared to the other. This means it is more reliable and more long life. But one disadvantage, the cost of the seal is highest for sure. Maybe and it started from 50K US dollar. Okay, it is life independent on quality of the seal. You have to make sure the uh, dry gas seal, uh, the seal which you are using, the gas seal, it should be perfect and should be uh, less than three micron. We have the gap between two faces from three to five microns. You have to make sure it, it, uh, it is less than this size to be able to lubricate without any effect on the faces. It is the migration of lob oil to seal site could be both a serious concern and need special barrier seal. For sure, if you have the gas seal, it is leaked and the oil contaminated with the gas, it will be hazard area. So we have to avoid this. This is actually, you have to make sure you have a labyrinth seal in the separation side, in the bearing housing side to avoid any contamination between the gas and the oil. Failure in many cases are catastrophic in nature. If you have any uh, catastrophic failure due to any uh, malfunction like high vibration surge, it will be catastrophic for sure. It is sensitive to gas composition because the idea or the, the function of the dry gas it depend on the gas quality. So it will depend uh, effect by the gas composition change. Any change it will affect the uh, operation of the dry gas seal. Here we will compare between wet seal and the dry gas seal. If we compare between the both of them as a oil support system, if you see here, it is wet seal. You need pumps, you need reservoirs, filter traps, whatever, coolers, consoles. In the dry gas seal, none. Seal oil consumption here in the wet seal, you are using the oil as a barrier or as a, you can say, as a container for the gas to avoid any steel le uh, gas leak from the compressor outside. So you are go using the oil, which is very huge amount you have to use for this purpose. However, in dry gas seal, there is no oil at all. You are using the gas instead of the oil. Maintenance cost. Maintenance cost, if you install the dry gas seal well, if you maintain it well, if you operate it well, for sure it will work for a long time. So if you go, come to the maintenance cost for, for the dragon seal, you can say it is nil. However, in the oil, it will be a major expenditure over equipment life. Many things will be there like oil leak, maybe oil consumption and so on. Regarding the energy, energy costs, for the uh, wet seal, seal power loss, as you see here, yeah, you already consumed the power. However, in the dry gas seal, you have here only one to two horsepower. In uh, oil, you have pumps, you have uh, drivers uh, like motors. So all this will consume a power. Process gas, if you come to the process gas leak here, it will be 25, 25 CSF FM. However, in the dry gas seal, it will be very much less compared to the oil seal. Oil contamination. Oil contamination, since you have loop oil system uh, uh, for the uh, wet seal, this means you have piping, you have uh, connections. So there is a lot of uh, source of contamination. However, in the dry gas seal, nothing. 
toxic buffer gas here in the oil wet seal. It is uh, consumption will be 40 to 70 SCC FM. However, it is very less compared to the regular seal. And unscheduled downtime. Here you have high chance of downtime and cost. However, it is yeah, very reliable and you can say nil in the drug seal. Aborted startup here frequently, however, it is rare. If we come to the main component of the dry gas seal. Here we have single dry gas seal. It contains, uh, con uh, the main component consists of we have here the primary ring and secondary ring or the mating ring. Somebody say it is face and seed and many terminology, but the main concept is the same. We have here primary ring, mating ring. We have the spring for sure to make, to make the closing force. We have the carrier, we have retainer, we have sleeve. And for sure we have O-ring everywhere to make sure there is no leak. Rotating ring, the rotating ring has some grooves, as we'll explain. It is actually a spiral groove to make the uh, compression effect. Stationary ring, stationary ring is a floating ring, as you see here, and also it is forced or drive it by the spring action. We'll talk about dry gas seal arrangement. Dry gas seal arrangement, uh, as we uh, just now said, it is single, can be single, tandem, tandem with intermediate uh, labyrinth seal, double, and treble gas, dry gas seal. So we are talking about the single one here. Single one, as we said, it is face and seat only. This means we have one set and the other components like the springs, like the retainer and the sleeve and so on. Tandem. We have two, set, uh, two sets of uh, rings. We are here one and two, and they have here the tertiary seal. We are talking about uh, later on about this because this is a very important part in the drug seal. Here, the primary seal and the secondary seal. Some people, they said secondary seal as a backup seal. This is another name also and another terminology. And as, as you see here, see the spiral. This is the rotating face, and this is the spiral of the ring. Here, we have tandem with intermediate labyrinths. We have primary, secondary, and we have here intermediate labyrinths between both of them to reduce the leak. And as you see here in the uh, cross-sectional, treble drag seal, I tried a lot to get any uh, photo about this was very, very rare because actually even in, uh, I never uh, faced this. It is maximum double or tandem, but treble, it is very rare and also it is in high pressure uh, application. As you see here, we have primary, we have secondary, we have the treble one and F, we have here the separation C. Now, we will take only tandem seal and we are talking about because this is the famous one in the in the whole compressors. It is normally you will find tandem seal. Tandem seal, as we explained earlier, we have the primary, we have the secondary, and we have the separation, separation seal here. And we have here very important part as well. It's named as process labyrinth seal. Okay. Now we'll talk about the balancing drum and the balancing line role in the dry gas seal operation. This very important part we have spoken about before, talking about how the dry gas seal is working. The balancing line, which you are saw here in the picture, it connects the discharge with the suction side to make sure you have the same suction pressure behind the, the, uh, the balancing drum. It is actually used as a primary function to control the thrust or to reduce the thrust, you can say, to reduce the thrust. However, there is another vital operation or vital function also used in the drag gas deal, a seed operation I will explain right now. Here we have the balancing 
Trump. Some people say, uh, some people also saying balancing piston. Same, uh, same function, same part, but with dif different name. This is the balancing piston or the balancing drum. It actually here the last, the last impeller, which is the high pressure, high pressure, the charge pressure. After that, this balancing drum, it, uh, it is actually control the pressure and reduce the pressure. And here behind the, the balancing drum, you have this balancing line, which connect the suction with the discharge size. So you will get here also suction pressure, PS. Okay, let us uh, see what is the, 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 the effect of both as a balancing line and the balancing uh, piston on the uh, function of uh, on the operation of the drag seat. As you see here, I brought this picture again to highlight here, as you see, this is the balancing drum. The, the, the charge side and outside the compressor body coming here, it will be the balancing lines. So we will get here behind the balancing drum, we'll get the suction pressure. This is very important, why? Because our dry gas seal will work against the suction pressure. It, is, it will be little, little high suction pressure, but still compared to the charge pressure, very, very big reduction. So our dry gas seal will work only slightly against higher pressure of the suction. This means it will reduce the load for sure, and also it will uh, uh, it will reduce the uh, the uh, size of the dry gas seal because you are now sealing between two pressure, which is suction pressure and atmospheric pressure only. Not like uh, the mechanical seal, for example, you have the chamber pressure, which is higher than suction pressure. Here, no, you have during uh, uh, due to the balancing line, you have here suction pressure behind the balancing drum. So you have here suction pressure, little higher suction pressure. After that, the drag seal will work. And I will explain uh, now. This is regarding the balancing drum. So let us talking about how drag gas works. Here is another, another uh, uh, figure about this, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, this uh, uh, function here also this as you see here in the red one this is a balancing drum okay and here the uh, our drag seal drive and land drive and this is a balancing line we have to make sure here as you see suction pressure is the same behind the balancing drum so our drag seal here in the suction side so there is no issue in the discharge side it will be work by balancing line it will be against only suction pressure however this side okay we have still here labyrinth seal as i said in the process side to reduce any leakage coming from the process gas to the dry gas seal okay so we have to understand this both dry gas seals drive and the non-drive work under the same condition with suction pressure on one side of the seal and atmospheric pressure at the other side. Because some people there are confusing confusing, and they uh, are saying it is a work, uh, working against the charge pressure. However, it is not like that in the non-drive end for sure. But for both sides, as I as, as explained now, both are working at the uh, suction, against the suction pressure. How drag a seal works? Here, the drag seal, as you see here, it is a spiral, a spiral groove. So when this one rotate, it will make like a suck. It will suck the, the uh, gas seal, and it will make like a, a circumferential ring here against the process gas to avoid any leakage go outside. So this is the rotating part, which is rotating phase. And you have each groove, it make like a compressor, a small compressor actually. It compresses the gas till it raises the pressure here in the circumferential, this area, okay? And it will hold any leakage from the process gas. It will be clear in the other uh, slide. 
Yes, here. This is the stationary ring, and this is the rotating ring. And as you see here, he, here is the groove. If you see the pressure here, this is the process. Uh, sorry, this is the sea gas which is coming here. After rotating inside the groove, it will increase the pressure. As you see here, pressure will be increased. Tell this figure. And the gap between both of them, it will be three to five microns because. During the uh, compression of the gas, it will open the gap between the face and, and the seat. And this area, okay, it will be from three to five microns. You know, the hair, the human hair uh, thickness is 40 microns. So you can imagine how much the gap here, three to five microns only. So we have here spring force, which is behind the primary. It will close, try to close this gap. However, due to the rotation of the uh, rotating face, it will increase the pressure of the gas. So it will lift this uh, ring up and it will make this gap. And as I said, it will make also the uh, circumferential ring around the gas, to, uh, uh, process gas to avoid any leakage outside. And as you see here, we have unidirectional and we have here by directional rotating face. Here, another very important features in the dry gas seal. It is actually a self adjustment device. However, if you, if you, for example, this is the normal gap. You have a normal gap, as we said, three to five microns between the mating ring and the rotating face. Okay, and this is, as you see here, the pressure. In case the gap increased, supposed for any axial movement or any, any other reason, the gap here increased. If the gap will increase, we have here the closing force, which is coming from the spring behind the uh, fixing ring or the uh, stationary ring. So it will close immediately the gap to the designed one, three to five microns again. Suppose here the other, the reverse, the gap closed due to any issue, for example, any turbulence or any uh, uh, any uh, problem in the inlet gas to the dry gas seal. At that time, okay, the closing force try to close the gap. When it will try to close the gap, the gas inside the pressure will be increased, so it will lift it again, and it will maintain also three to five microns as per the design. So all this will be fine here in this uh, text. Okay, come to the dry gas seal system. As you see, it is very complicated. And this is the console of the dry gas seal. Here, again, we'll explain inlet outlet for each port. As you see here, this is a tandem. This is a primary seal. This is a stationary, and this is a separation seal. And as I told you, this is the process Labyrinth seal, process side labyrinth seal. Okay, so we have the dry, uh, dry, uh, dry, gas, dry gas seal, which is coming from the uh, compressor, the charge compressor. It comes to the filter. After that, we have BDC uh, control valve to adjust the pressure orifice. And it will come again here to the inlet part of the first set of the primary seal. When it will go inside and after compression, it will make the gap between the face and seat. And for sure, there is some leakage will come and it will go to the flare. This is the flare connection. Okay. Here we have this labyrinth. What is the function of this labyrinth? This function of this labyrinth to maintain the uh, pressure here in the primary chamber, primary uh, gas seal chamber. And always we have to make sure the pressure in this port higher than the process gas. Otherwise, the process gas will go inside the dry gas seal and will damage. Because for sure, the dry, uh, dry gas seal uh, inlet gas is very, very fine and at a certain filtration rate and a, fil a certain filtration uh, rating as well. Okay, so if you have here the pressure reduced and become 
lower than this pressure, the gas from the process uh, gas inside will go through the labyrinth seal to the gas seal, and it will damage the face and seal. So you will find in your compressor for the inlet uh, seal gas, you will find high and high high. This is alarm and the trip. What's the meaning of uh, trip, uh, high and high high? This means the difference between these two, it, it will be uh, reduced. This means you have a chance of the process gas to go inside and damage your dry gas seal, the primary one. So we have to maintain this pressure is higher than the process gas side. Okay, here we have another uh, secondary or backup seal. And for this one, we have the uh, nitrogen inlet coming from here. And this is will maintain the uh, hold the pressure here. The dry gas will hold the pressure. However, you have some leak will contaminate with the uh, gas and will go to again to the flare or uh, safe location. Here, separation seal. Separation seal was the function of the separation seal. The function of separation seal to make sure there is no any gas come out from the dry gas seal body outside. Okay, so we will insert here also nitrogen and to the uh, to the uh, separation seal and the separation seal. Some gas will leak here and will contaminate with whatever is coming from the this uh, secondary seal and go outside to safe location. Okay, to atmospheric. Okay, and this one, if you have any leakage, it will go to the bearing housing area, which we have a vent and there is no any issue because this is nitrogen, pure nitrogen. We have already here process gas. The first one go to the flare. The second one, which is maybe minor traces is coming here. It will be also, uh, uh, it will be uh, mixed with the uh, nitrogen and, and go outside. Okay. Now, the dry gas seal system consists of five items, very, very uh, important to understand the five streams. The first stream is the primary seal gas supply, this is on. As we saw here, let me uh, return back to this. As you see here, it comes from the discharge through the filter, through the pressure control valve and go to the first one, first chamber of the uh, primary seal. You can see here, this is the seal gas supply. It go to the first chamber. After that, as I told you, this is a process uh, labyrinth seal to avoid any contamination from the process gas to the dry gas seal, okay? This is the primary connection or the primary seal gas supply. Okay, and this is process gas, but filtered one. Okay. After that, after going to the uh, first uh, uh, seal, some traces will escape and you will go to the uh, primary vent or the flare line. This is the first one. The second one, which is the secondary seal gas supply. Secondary seal gas supply, it supplied nitrogen to the secondary seal, normally it is nitrogen, as I said, and here we have a tandem and between with the internal labyrinth seal between both. So if the nitrogen go inside and here it, uh, for, due to the rotating phase, it will increase the pressure and hold any, any uh, gases from escape, any leakage, it will go and contaminate with the gas and go outside to the flare here. In the meantime, some gases will escape as well and will go to the uh, secondary vent and it will go to the atmosphere. The last one is the separation seal. Separation seal, as I explained, it is very important for the dry gas seal operation as well because you will supply here nitrogen to make sure it will go with the surplus leakage from the secondary seal to the 
safe location to the atmospheric. In the meantime, also some leakage will go here and uh, like a nitrogen, but pure nitrogen will go to the bearing housing area and it will go to the vent. Okay, so we have five streams, three, two inlet, one outlet. Okay, and we have two vents. Primary vent, as we said, it is going to the flare, and the secondary vent will go to the safe location or to, or to that. Separation seal, there is a lot uh, uh, or three types of uh, uh, separation seal, like what uh, we saw, it is tertiary seal, it is actually labyrinth seal, and we have carbon bushing seal as well. So we have here labyrinths, or you, maybe you will find two carbon ring with garter ring and spring in between. And here, as you see, this is a tertiary seal, and this is a carbon ring seal. Now we're talking about dry gas seal failure. Dry gas seal failure. I actually, I pl uh, planned also to talk about instrumentation and uh, uh, troubleshooting, but I, uh, I, I remove it and I will explain only the drug gas failure due to the uh, time limit. So there is some study coming to say the drug gas seal failure, uh, so drug gas seal failure, which uh, contribute under the shutdown or, or uh, breakdown, it is 22%. Okay, so we'll talk about now what is the reason of the dry gas seal failure? Because sometimes we uh, maintain the compressor, make major overhaul and hand over the machine. However, the maintenance or the overall failed due to dry gas seal leak. And you have to reopen again the machine and replace the dry gas. So what is the common reason for the dry gas seal failure? The first one is contamination. Because the dry gas seal itself as a function depend on the quality of the inlet gas which making the, uh, making the seal. So if you have dirty seal gas, for sure, you, uh, the gap will be uh, reduced due to, uh, because you will insert, insert a dirty gas which will make a wrapping between the face and seat and it will wipe off the spiral uh, groove in the rotating face, which will fail the diagonal seal and for sure it will leak. So we have also liquid. Suppose you have any uh, traces of liquid coming with the uh, inlet gas to the first or the second one, what will happen? This liquid traces will go inside and for sure the viscosity is different also, it will make uh, uh, not like a gas, the friction will be higher, so it will fail. If you have oil, for example, if you have oil, it's leak or some traces of oil coming with the stream, it will affect the drug gas seal and also the contact between the faces and it will destroy and wipe off the spiral groove. If you have a dirty buffer and separation gas, it will also damage the, uh, the seal. Regarding the rotor axial movement and the vibration surge, wrong insertion, etc. Okay, let's talk about. Yeah, here, this is one photo for the drag uh, seal after removal from the machine. As you see here, see, this is uh, uh, supposed to be the way for the separation seal or for the uh, and let gas seal and see how much contaminated. And also it is like a sludge, if you see. So contamination is the enemy for the dry gas seal, the first enemy. And also this is the main reason for the gas seal failure. If you see here, as you see some uh, debris of foreign materials inside the dry gas seal. Here, this is another photo for oil 
going inside between the face and seat, which, as you see here, damages the, uh, the, the uh, ring. So, see here, this is a spring, supposed to be in clean condition. All this contaminated with the sludge material because the process gas, maybe also in this case, process gas go inside the dry gas seal and they contaminated the, the component of the dry gas seal itself. However, we have the, and in this case, we're supposed to have a trip for, uh, for the machine. It should be trapped due to high, high, uh, between the uh, due to the differential pressure between the uh, inlet seal gas and the process gas. Rotor axial movement. Actually, for the drag steel, there is a certain designed movement. I will show you on the movie uh, of the uh, stationary stationary ring due to the uh, spring action. Okay. However, we have a, a limited axial movement should be for any drag seal if you open the drawing and if you open the data sheet you will find a certain value for acceptable acceptable axial movement if you increase this value it will affect the uh, integrity of the face and seat and it will damage the drag seal if you see here as you see it is it got cracked due to the overload, because there is excessive axial movement affect the, uh, the contact area and lead to, uh, as you see, the crack in the uh, ring. I got this one from one uh, uh, drag steel uh, data sheet and also manual. If you see, it is clearly mentioned, the maximum axial movement of the drag seal, this is the uh, name, gas back, during operation should not be more than 2.54 plus or minus. Okay. Also, you will find in the drawing of the dry gas seal, as you see here, it is mentioned clearly here in the drawing how much the maximum allowable axial movement of the dry gas seal. So we have to maintain and we have to make sure, okay, don't exceed this limit during installation. For sure, you have the gap only three to five, five micron, but during installation, when you uh, install the rotor, you have to uh, put the rotor in the center. And during the installation of the dry gas seal drive and the run drive, you have to lock the, the rotor. For example, if you are going to install the dry gas seal in drive end, you have to lock the rotor from the non drive end to avoid any movement of the dry gas seal more than the maximum allowable design value. Now we'll come to, to the end, okay? And we will see one movie which show, showing very clearly whatever we uh, discussed now, and also we'll go through it in details. This is the dry gas seal, as you see. Sorry for that. This is a sleeve, and you will find here both rotating face. I think I can stop from here, Salah, that's right. As you see, it is now dismantled. Yes, you can stop and, and, and pause from this, uh, this moment, yes. that's correct. Very good. Okay, if you see here, primary seal, secondary seal, and separation seal, okay? And you'll find many, see how many O-rings in the drag seal? It is very, very actually complicated. And if you open one of, uh, of them in, uh, in one day, you will come to know how much it is complication of this uh, part in the machine. And it's actually a very vital part of the centrifugal compressor. As you see here, I have to run it again. Yes, that's I okay. Think so. 
yeah. If you see here, see these O-rings, these holes, as you see, we are talking about uh, inlet primary, okay, for the seal gas and also for the buffer gas. And we are saying about uh, for separation seal and outlet for flare and for atmospheric. These holes, actually this is a circumferential which is the gas of the inlet gas going inside and from these holes go to the uh, primary seal, okay? So you have to put here two O-rings to make sure there is no any, any leak for the inlet gas going uh, here and there. Let me, yes. And this is a stationary part. This is a separation seal. See how many O-rings there. This is the sleeve, okay? This is the drag sleeve. And as you see how many uh, O-rings and also inside there is side O-ring between the shaft and the sleeve itself. This is the first one, the first rotating face, okay? Let's uh, continue. This is a rotating face, and this is bi-directional one. Look here, we have two sets, this tandem, and you have here the spring, and you have the mating, or you can say the stationary ring, okay? Look what will happen here. One minute. Yes. Yes. When the rotating face rotate, it will make like here suck of the gas, and the pressure will increase in this spiral till the tip. See the spring action here. See the lift up. So the pressure increased and it increased the gap and make a lifting. Again, it will come back if this reduced due to as here stop. If you stop the machine for sure, at the time the closing force will be more and this spring action will, will act on the uh, stationary part and will close the gap. But when the machine run, this is spiral, the gas will come over here and will go inside. And as you see here is much deeper, but if you go in the to the tip, the uh, thickness will come less. So it will come like a compressor, small compressor. It will compress the gas till the tip. At the tip, you will find here like a circumferential ring around the process gas to avoid any leakage, okay? Here, this is the separation seal. And this is the nitrogen inlet to the separation seal. As I told, this to make sure there is no any contaminated gas coming from here. Sorry, any leakage, any gas leak from both, from the primary or secondary, it will come to the bearing end, should not be. So we, we have to maintain here nitrogen at the inlet here to the separation. When the nitrogen go inside, you, there is two ways. The one to the bearing side, bearing side, so bearing drive or non-drive. Okay, so this this nitrogen will come over here to the bearing housing and it will go to the vent and to, there is no any harm. Here, the nitrogen will go to the vent of the secondary seal. It will come with the some gases come from the secondary uh, steel. It will go with the nitrogen to the safe location, to the atmospheric safe location at height. Let us see what is next. As you see here, two O-rings. Why is these two O-rings? To make sure the inlet uh, inert gas to the separation seal will not leak here or there. It will be only in one way. Here also another O-ring 
for the vent, which is a secondary vent going to the atmosphere. Here, this is uh, actually the first one. It should be that this is a, a seal gas which is coming to the primary uh, chamber or the primary seal. See, it will go to the uh, first chamber. For sure, there is some leak. It will happen due to the closing or the opening of, of this port. Okay, so these traces will come over here and will go to the first vent or the primary vent to the flare. Okay, here you will see the buffer gas, or you can say the inlet gas to the uh, secondary seal. This is also nitrogen, and we inject the nitrogen here to make sure any leakage from the primary gas seal, it will come over here and it will, uh, uh, it will mix with the, the uh, nitrogen, okay? And it will go to the uh, secondary vent. Sorry, I don't know why it came out like that. Yes, let's uh, finish. Okay, here, this is the uh, uh, nitrogen for the secondary seal. The nitrogen will go inside and it will uh, compress between the face and seat. And uh, some gases from the nitrogen will go again to the first, uh, first vent or the primary vent to the flare along with the traces of the, uh, uh, of the uh, gas. So look here, again, some gases will go and uh, with the, the nitrogen will go to the safe location. Here also, O-rings, as you see everywhere, to make sure the gases, uh, regardless it is the primary event, the secondary event or inlet or, uh, or uh, uh, the buffer gas inlet or separation gas inlet, all will be in the same, the same, uh, 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 same uh, line which we designed for. So I think you now we come to the end, okay. I did the, uh, my level best to try to uh, explain the drag I see how it works. And uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, topics related to the drag seal, like uh, instrumentation and control and also troubleshooting, but it needs for sure a lot of time to uh, explain. So I hope it will be okay. And inshallah, uh, everyone got some information and uh, uh, it become helpful for all. Uh, actually, so uh, Engineer Mohammed, that really was amazing, amazing uh, uh, session and presentation. It's really very, very good, really. Um, like many, many of those who work in the condition monitoring and reliability, uh, the their, their main concentration in the diagnostics, some of them not have that much knowledge on the rotating equipment part and how the, uh, the equipment look like from inside, how uh, seals like dry gas seal, which is really very complicated uh, compartment inside the machine, how, how it's working and you explain it in a very good uh, way it was very nice presentation. Uh, it was really very useful for myself. I'm, I'm talking especially about myself. I learned a lot, especially in this presentation and uh, you did a very good effort on it. Really, thank you so much for, for, for this. And uh, I would like to thank all the, the participants. Uh, thanks for attending in this uh, uh, online conference. 
and we still tomorrow have more free presentations. Uh, you can find all the links uh, for the presentations on my LinkedIn, on many of the participants and, this, and, the, and the presenters LinkedIn as well. Uh, also for all uh, videos, they all recorded. You can find the recorded video on my YouTube channel. I put the link for this uh, YouTube channel on the, uh, in the chat. Uh, also, it will be on the Facebook page. You can find it on that one as well. And um, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. And I did by myself. Thank you very much, Anjir Muhammad, for this. And uh, looking forward to see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's actually, it's very hard for me to uh, present in front of my mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> well, like, we, we learn we learn a lot lots from you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jim Muhammad. Thank you so thank much you. for this. Thank you. Salam. Okay. Wa alaikum salam. See ya. Bye bye.